Well, it's been a very, very data busy day today across the world, starting with China this morning. We had a raft of numbers, GDP, retail sales and so on. Craig, let me first ask you regarding the latest numbers from China. Markets are particularly disappointed with them, despite the fact that, for instance, GDP was only slightly below analysts' expectations. But looking at some of the numbers, the Hong Kong market, for instance, down by a big chunk. Why was there such a disappointing response uh, to this Chinese data? Well, I think taken one at a time, the data is not terrible. The one that I would say is not good is the retail sales figures. We know that the consumer is not really that strong in China at the moment. Ever since the COVID restrictions were dropped, the consumer sentiment just hasn't really bounced back. Consumer activity hasn't strongly bounced back either, which when you take it in contrast with the US and the euro area, the UK and much of the rest of the Western world where people left their houses and started spending straight away, created quite a hot environment, contributed to inflation because of excess demand. We're not really seeing that in China, uh, and that's continuing to be the case. So, for example, as you've alluded to, GDP, 5.2% shy of 5.3, not the end of the world. Fixed asset investment, 3 above 2.9, pretty good. Industrial production, 6.8 versus 6.6, .6, perfectly fine. Retail sales, 7.4% down from 10.1%, 7.9% expected. That's a big miss and a big drop off as well. And we've got to remember, obviously, if that was a UK number, we'd all be celebrating 7.4% retail sales, but it's not. Uh, we have to compare it to trend uh, in China as well. Also, the unemployment rate unexpectedly ticked higher to 5.1% as well. This is a country that stopped publishing youth unemployment data because it approached a level i think close to 20 percent where it was uh it's not something that they necessarily wanted to talk about anymore so we're, we're talking about a situation where the economy never roared back from covid it's kind of settled with five percent growth targets and even then even though it's not necessarily undershooting the growth target it is still struggling to get activity going again it will get activity going again but it's still going to be held back by the property sector because that's a massive um, a massive change and a massive shift uh, that we've seen throughout the economy, even though they're continuing to try and plug away uh, to kind of create stability there again. But the consumer activity is one thing that they maybe have less control over. We've seen rate cuts, etc., uh, that haven't really had an effect. It's been like pushing on a piece of string uh, in, in terms of its effectiveness to try and get consumers spending again. It's going to take more fiscal stimulus and we have seen that towards the back end of last year. We're going into 2024 now. I'm sure activity will start to pick up again but we're just not seeing the evidence of that yet and i really think that set the tone for the day which is why we're seeing a sea of red across the market and why hong kong in particular lost almost four percent yeah i've got the chart pulled up craig as you mentioned that and and it is a it is a bloodbath here big sell-off on the chinese stock market and of course this has implications to other areas of the market um you know i was listening to, to lagarde just speaking about how on, on how you know the u.s elections will be heavily impactful to uh the the ecb going forward and the rest of europe well china same thing china uh going continuously down like this of course has implications on other areas of the market um you know of course that the easiest one to spot would be uh just the oil market right you've seen the oil market has been an interesting place it's been very back and forth because on one hand you have this sort of data where you see a slowing china which is a huge demander of of crude oil right so if if the chinese economy is really slowing that hurts the demand concept for for oil um you know the other side of what's hurting the demand is of course uh, supply production being nations, you know, the United States, of course, uh, producing a ton of oil uh, going in the, into, uh, into this year. So, um, you know, expected to hit record highs this year, next year, and the year after, I believe. So it's an interesting story for oil. You have a huge amount of uh, supply issues and now with lack of demand um, from China, but perhaps from other places too, with all the rate cuts, it's a mixed bag. You also have, of course, the geopolitical events. So oil seems to be a market that is just stuck in, uh, in, in, you know, in limbo. It can't seem to find a breakout in either direction. Yeah, I think it's always worth pointing out that China is the world's largest importer of crude oil. So when we do see the data, it can have more of an impact on the oil prices than maybe some other piece of data that we do get.